Listen up, Ninos. It's Wags with Iron Man 4x4. I'm back again. We are going to be doing an install of the Iron Man 4x4 Foam Cell Pro 2.5 inch kit with UCAs on this Dodge Ram 1500DS. The year ranges for this kit are 09 up to 2018, and the kit's good on all the trucks except for the Eco Diesels, and it don't work with Air Ride. And no one's half the battle. Now you know. That makes it official. First things first, if you're working in a garage or in a shop, put it on the lift and be safe. If you're in a garage, sit your e-brake. Clint, I'm talking Wait. over here doing stuff. Rude. Chalk your tire. Chalk. What? Don't. Hey, we don't want a bunch of no back. back talk. We don't want a bunch of bunch of back talk in this video. No back talk. This guy. Hey, Clint, I'm your son. Why you talk to me like that? Unreal. Set your e-brake, chalk your tires, get your jack, and let's get these wheels off. If you're taking off stock lug nuts, it's a 22 millimeter socket. I always like to take all my electronics and brake lines, unhook them first, because if you screw up, that is what you are going to break. So let's just get that out of the way now. So grab a, like a body clip removal tool, and we'll get in here. And a lot of these little clips, you can either pop them out from the upper control arm like that, or you can unclip them, but I like doing it like this. This one just pops right out away from the brake line. There we go. Those are unhooked. Ram didn't give us a whole lot of extra slack in the brake line, so I like to pull the caliper off. But anytime you're messing with your calipers and pulling them off, you want to spread the pads or push the pistons back in a little bit. What that does is will push fluid back into the system, into the reservoir, and that'll give us some extra play in the pads so that when we take the caliper off, when we go to put it back on, it's easy to get it over the rotor. We're on the back top side of the caliper here, and if you look right down in there, you can see that you've got the piston and then the back of the pad. And what you wanna do is take a big wide flathead screwdriver and you wanna try to get it between the piston and the pad. And once you get it in there, just slowly apply pressure and you'll hear it and you'll see it. The piston will move and you'll hear fluid start to push back into the system. So we'll push that piston back and same thing down here. And once we get it pulled back, you know, go nice and slow, it's a little tough, that pad will start to wiggle around. Then you know you can pull your brake caliper off and you'll be safe to put it back on. The caliper's held on with only two bolts up against the knuckle. It's a 21 millimeter, so grab yourself a socket. There's one up top here and there's one right down below. There's the bottom one. We'll set that aside and now we'll go after this top one here. There we go. I like to lay my bolts out the way they came out. So my top bolt goes on the top, my bottom bolt goes there. You can also take a piece of foam or a piece of cardboard if you really wanna be super detail oriented and you can kinda either draw a map or just take a knife, stab holes and lay your hardware out. Um, when I'm working on a project that I've never done before, I will take a piece of foam or cardboard and then lay it out, basically map it so I know that every bolt is gonna go back in exactly where it came out of. Before we pull the caliper off, we wanna make sure we have a hanger. So I've got this hanger wire that's adjustable or a bungee, but I've just run this hanger wire through um, the frame. And now I'll slowly pull the caliper off like that. Run it right there. Keep it tucked up nice and high. We'll twist that together. There we go, it's out of the way. It's hanging, there's no stress or tension on our brake line. So we don't have to worry about hurting anything there. Now we want to get our front sway bar end link pulled off. That's this guy right here. The whole thing's got to come out because we're lifting the truck two and a half inches or slightly more. We provided you with this s 075 sway bar end link for the front of the truck. So that's what that looks like. It's going to be a 16 on the top and an 18 on the bottom. We'll get that all ripped apart. And then our sway bar will be free from our lower control arm and we can start stretching things out. Make it easy on yourself and grab a 16 mil ratcheting wrench and then a seven mil socket for the hex on top. I'll cast a hex on it. 
So Ram is like super cool and thought, hey, it's a seven mil hex on the top. So on the bottom, let's change it up, you know, make it an eight. And the bottom nuts an 18. Man, that, 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 that nut was loaded for bear. The one thing I forgot to mention too, is when you're disconnecting a sway bar, you've got to do it on both sides of the truck. So if you just pulled your driver's side wheel off, you want to make sure you get your driver and passenger side wheel off because that sway bar is not going to move until we get the end links off on the front right and front left side. So this one is loose. Now we'll go to the other side and do that. So now that that side's done, we're going to unhook the sway bar. So push on up and we can pop that in link out. All right, let's unhook the spindle or the knuckle from the upper control arm. And this is a 21 mil nut. It's got a hex on it, but most of the time these bad boys will pop loose on their own. And the other thing too, you don't want to take this nut all the way off because we have to separate it. And if you pull the nut off and you smack this thing with a sledge and it blows apart, it could come swinging out, hurt you, or I don't know, hopefully hurt somebody else if you're lucky. So I leave mine on a few threads. Let's go grab a sledge. All right, to separate this, you want to hit right in this region here. Not here or here so much, but right in that region here. I knew it. So <laughs> give yourself a couple setups here. Both hands. All right, so here's the deal. Clint's always got the good ideas. Look, I like hitting this with a sledge hammer because it makes me feel good about, you know, hitting that. Sure. But you want me to use a puller or at least tell the kind folks that are all internet weirdos that you can do it with a puller too. This is more acceptable. You don't run the risk of damaging your ball joint by slipping with a hammer. I it just, also comes out a lot quicker. It, I, I agree with everything you said real quick, just to recap. Um, did that get damaged? No, it, I, you're right, it didn't get damaged. And how much is that tool? I say hit it with a hammer. Yeah, how much is that? Uh, cost 10 bucks to rent down at your local Okay, auto. Daddy Warbucks. Well, I stole this from the warehouse. So, find a warehouse and steal tools. Well, see you later. <laughs> All right, so now that this is loose, you can kind of hang on the top of your UCA. Spin the nut off, and then we can separate this apart. Oops. But you see, that's why we pulled the caliper off and tied it up there, because it's just, this brake line is going to be really tight. So I like to put the nut back where it goes so I don't lose it or forget. That's all loose. Now on this Foam Cell Pro kit, it's a stage two. And to achieve that two and a half or a little bit above two and a half inches of ride height, we're going to swap out for our Ironman 4x4 Pro Forged uh, UCAs. So now we'll rip this UCA out and get the good one put in. One thing Ram did, which I love, and a lot of the domestic US trucks do this, is instead of having one super long through bolt that attaches the UCA to the frame of the truck, they did two shorter ones, probably just as strong. They also have encapsulated nuts on the backside. So grab an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench throw it on the bolt side, and then we can just loosen everything up. And those two bolts are gonna pop out, upper control and it comes right out, super nice. Just let that nut tab come around, it'll hit the frame. And then we can just work this all from the bolt side. So you don't need to pull your inner fender liner out to do this, but one thing I will caution you is you've got some wire harnesses here. So you always wanna be really careful when you're working around UCAs should be able to pull this nut plate out. I'm gonna just move that wire harness forward gently. There we go. And same thing here on the back side. These guys are tightened on there pretty good. So if you need to throw lock a couple wrenches together, go for it. Get you that leverage you need. These guys come out real easy. Cool. There's a nut plate. Feed the bolt out. Ooh, 
Okay. There we go. Tighten that up. Boom. Now we can move on to pulling the strut out of the truck. So we'll get the three top 15 mil nuts off the strut top and our lower shock bolt. So I always pull two off all the way and the front one will loosen to the top because then when we pull the lower through bolt for the bottom of the coil over, it won't just fall out. It'll hold it in place till we're ready. All right, we'll just leave that with a few threads on it and now we can move to the lower shock bolt. All right, now we just need to get this lower shock bolt out. The nut on the front is a big old fatty 24 and the back of the bolt is a 21. So we'll start on the nut side. So I'm gonna throw a 21 wrench on the back and my 24 socket on the front. Let me just mention something real quick. Don't feel like you always need to be using power tools. I, I like power tools, it makes it go a lot faster. But when you're spinning stuff off, if it is spinning really, really slowly and your gun is working extra hard, you are building a massive amount of heat. What you can do to reduce that is you can spray a little WD-40 because if it catches a gall, a little piece of dirt or rock or something, and as it's backing out, if it gets into the threads, it will destroy all the threads on that bolt coming out. And then you're, huh, then you're screwed, pardon the pun. You'll have to go down to the dealership and get a new OEM bolt. So, all right, we'll pull the shock bolt out. You might have to put your hand under the control arm and wiggle it up or down a little bit. If it binds up on you too, you can always take that 21 and we can use the threads to just walk it back out. There we go. Now, we pulled the shock through bolt out, the lower shock bolt. I'm gonna run that nut back on so we know that's what it is. And the reason why this guy isn't falling apart is because we left this one nut, this 15 up here. It doesn't look like anything's going anywhere, so I'm gonna slide that off. All right, now we can pull the strut out. All right, and to get this guy out, we're gonna push down on our lower control arm a little bit. Be cognizant of your CV axle. We don't want to hyperextend it or pull that out of the socket. And then this guy, we're gonna pull the lower mount out and rock him in front of the lower control arm. Then we'll slide the spindle over and then we can slide that right up and out. The other thing too, I should have done this before I pulled it out, but I'm gonna take a paint pin or a silver Sharpie and I'm gonna mark what is the front of this, just so that we know. Because if, you never know, if something happened and you had to put these back in, you're gonna wanna know which way they go in. All right, grab your Ironman 4x4 Super Yidge Foam Cell Pro pre-built strut, and we will put it back in the way the old one came out. So again, this is gonna be a little bit taller because it's you're getting two and a half more inches. So we'll feed it in here. We're gonna drop it down in front of the control arm and then you're gonna have to try to line up one of these strut top bolts. Make sure you have a strut top nut handy. And we will just spin that guy on just so he don't go nowhere. So take your spindle and start to rock it towards the back of the truck to give yourself room. And then this horseshoe style mount will come around We'll push down on the control arm. Look at that, movie magic, minus the magic. All right, grab your lower shock bolt. We're gonna feed it through the backside just like the way it came out. Get it to line up, push down on that lower control arm. Wiggle it around a little bit. Look at that right there. Spin that down. And we are just gonna get it hand tight and leave it loose because just like every other video we've done, do not tighten bushings in the air. Make sure your truck is on the ground. That way that bushing is tightened at its like natural ride height now. It'll save your life or your bushings, they won't wear out. I'm gonna grab the other strut top nuts, throw them on. 
This strut top uses 14 millimeter nuts. So grab yourself a wrench and we will get these guys buttoned down. You wanna lock these guys down to about 35 pounds. So before we get this uh, new ProForge GCA installed, here's a pro tip, it's called reading. So flip it upside down and at the end of the part number, it's gonna say LH or RH. So that's left hand or right hand. These look very similar. Just to kind of show you what we're dealing with here. This is the front left driver's side OEM UCA. If you put the right hand side there, you might go, oh, they look, they look really similar. This must be it. It's not. Iron Man is moving that ball joint back to provide you that extra caster and camber correction. So just check your part number, make sure they go on on the right side because you could put the wrong one in the wrong side. There we go. All right, this can be a little tricky, so I'm just gonna get the back bolt started. Then we'll line up this front bolt here. Go behind this wire harness, be extra careful. Just a little bit of love. There we go. Another thing too, if you, like, I don't know how you'd, what kind of impact gun would be small enough to fit in here. Uh, I would not try it, but when you're messing around with power tools, and these nut plates, these things turn into like ninja swords. So if you're messing with this, this thing will swing around and take your fingers off. So be very, very careful. So we're gonna lay that down on the frame side before we go to tighten it up. All right, so grab your 18 and we will start snugging these guys down. These control arms, you're tightening something that has a bushing in it. So you do not wanna lock it down until the truck is on the ground. So we'll just get it snug. Cool. Cool. You just want it snug enough so that the control arm will hold itself in place, but not too tight that it's gonna bind up your bushings. These ProForge UCAs are compatible with the Ram 1500 DS and the new DT truck, which is the newer one. So we've included some additional hardware if you have the newer DT because you're gonna need to use this to attach for your ride height sensor and for your ABS line. If you've got a DS, you don't need this extra hardware, but it's there. All right, now we gotta hook up our ball joint to our factory spindle or knuckle. So we'll slide this nut down I like to keep it handy. We're gonna rock the spindle back forward. The trick I do is I'll spin this nut back on and I'll grab my wrench. I'll try to remember what angle I had and this stud needs to come forward a little bit. So I'll just put it on the nut and rock it up. There we go, we got it to move. Now when we drop that down, it goes right into place. We throw this nut back on, get a few threads, perfect. So this is a 21, and as we're tightening this nut up, just make sure you can keep tightening it, but if the stud starts to spin, you're spinning the ball joint in the socket. You don't wanna do that. So if it does start to spin, grab yourself, and I think it's a 10 mil. So I'm gonna throw a 10 mil socket on the stud as I tighten this 21 down. the back side of this spindle casting, you cannot get a wrench fully onto it. So you have to use the open inside, which is a little frustrating, but all right, this ball joint nut, you just wanna lock it down to factory torque specs. All right, let's do our caliper next. So we'll get our wire tie out of the way. Again, we wanna be careful that we're not putting any undue stress. See how? we move those pistons back so we've got clearance with our pads. That just slides right over the rotor. Super easy, saved us a ton of extra hassle and time. I'll grab my caliper bolt and get this top caliper bolt started too. All right, we'll grab a 21 socket and we will get this caliper button back down. And don't forget to torque these caliper bolts back down to the factory spec. We'll hook our ABS line back up. This guy goes right here on the back side of that upper control arm. Plug it right in there. This 
hooks right back into that bracket on the ABS line. And this guy plugs right back into the back side of the knuckle. There we go. Let me pull my wire tie out. Cool. Now we can move to the passenger side. We'll get that all buttoned up. And once everything's installed, upper control arm and coil over, then we can work on our sway bar at the end. Passenger side is caught up to where we are on the driver's side. All right, moving on to the end links, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter wrench for the top nut and a 19 for the bottom nylock. And we will start with the top. These bushings have a shoulder, which is gonna fit right up into the sway bar. We'll drop that bushing back down, followed by the washer and that 17 mil nut, nylock nut. All right, we'll get that finger tight. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I lined up the threaded shaft on the passenger side. So I'll pull this 19 mil nut off here, line it up over here, put a little bit of a bend in it. And then when we push our sway bar down, it'll, it should go in. Come on, you. So again, you're working with both sides. So we wanna check the other side, make sure it's not binding up. All right, back on the driver's side, we will spin this on, just catch a few threads. There we go, awesome. Now, why are these sway bar end links so totally awesome? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they have a turnbuckle here and they're fully adjustable. If you did not, like this is compressed, this is shortened like your stock one, your sway bar is gonna be in the down position which can wear out your sway bar bushings on the mount. We don't want that. We want this to sit at its you know, equilibrium or its normal ride height. All right, so we're gonna hold that with a 15 and then with our 17, we're gonna tighten that nylock down. I might even try doing it the right way. You know, most of what I know about turnbuckles is um, actually when I was about seven watching WWF, I think the rule is you can only slam someone's face into the turnbuckle 10 times and then the ref cuts you off. But leave a comment below, I may be wrong. I think it was 10 times. These ones, you'd only smash somebody's face in once, they'd be done. All right, we're gonna tighten these down until the bushings are rounded out, just like that, and that's good and tight. That nylock nut will hold that on. Now we can switch down to the lower side. And for that, you are gonna need, all right, we got our 16 on there. We'll grab our 19. All right, so we got the end links installed. One thing I forgot to mention, we don't want to adjust this turnbuckle until the truck is on the ground because when it's under its own weight, this lower control arm, all your suspension is going to compress. The truck's going to sit at its natural ride height. Then we'll be able to see where our sway bar is. So we'll wait and adjust it on the ground. All right, we're working on the back of the truck. Make life easy on yourself. Grab a 10 mil with an impact because you have 11 of these screws that you need to pull out to pull this inner fender liner out. Look, I've tried other ways of just pulling these guys and trying to space it, but it's not gonna work unless you drill a hole in the plastics to get this top shock bolt out. So just pull the liner out. I'll show you how to get it out without scratching your truck up. Using a impact saves you a ton of time. So make sure you keep all 11 of those tucked away safe. You don't want to lose them. It's always a pain when you go to put it back together and you don't have what you need. So to take this out, we'll start down here and work our hand behind. And you just want to keep pushing the plastic back into the truck as you pull the front of it out. And then you won't scratch up your truck. We just keep pushing in and pulling down. And then once we get there, we can actually push everything forward and then rock it right out. Okay, what I think is the hardest part of this install is your removing the rear top shock bolt. I don't know why Ram designed this the way they did, but I already pulled the passenger side apart, but you can see here on the driver's side, this bolt sits in here like this. There is a nut on the back that is not encapsulated, which I don't know why. They put encapsulated nuts all over this truck where you really don't even need it, but the one spot you need it, they didn't do it. Look, if you have special tools like a 21 millimeter crow's foot on a swivel headed half inch drive ratchet, you can get to it, but not everybody has a set of crow's feet. 
The other option you could do is you can try to sneak your arm back in here with a big 21 millimeter wrench and get the open in and actually just try to fit the flats of the wrench sideways as you hit it with an impact. You're just trying to keep that nut from spinning loose. That's how I did that side. Or uh, most of us all have ratchets and sockets and swivels and extensions. So you could take a 3 8 drive, thin walled 21 millimeter socket, put it on a swivel or a U-joint, that's what I mean, with an extension uh, make sure you have your ratchet set to loosen and then you're going to feed it up behind the gas tank up and over. You're also going to want to put a ton of light in here so you can see what you're doing. All right. And if you can get that socket to kind of drop down over the nut, that works really well too. And then you can get the front with an impact. So good luck. This is really, really tough. Um, if anybody out there knows a better way to do it, leave a comment uh, below in the video. Um, I would love to know. And there's the nut right there. So we've got the truck up on our lift in the air. Now we can support our rear axle, um, or if you're working on the garage floor, you might support it with a jack. But when you pull this sh top shock bolt, it's gonna drop down. Now, it's not just gonna fall out because it's got a five link in the back. So you've got lower links, upper links, you've got a pan hard bar and you've got sway bar, that's gonna hold it. So when this comes out, don't be surprised if everything drops down on you a little bit. Just like that. Ram uses an upper isolator on this coil. So what I always like to do is just put a little hash mark here with a Sharpie or a paint pen. If for some reason you need to put things back in, you know exactly how they came out. All right, so we're gonna give a little down pressure and this rear coil will come out and we'll go take the passenger one out also. Let's get this driver's side lower shock bolt out. It's a 21 socket on the nut and a 21 wrench on the bolt head. Right out. So to get the Ironman 4x4 rear coils in, we're gonna need to unhook the rear sway bar and support our axle because we need that extra droop. A couple things to check for though, your ABS line and your brake line, um, we've still got some slack in here, but we're gonna go ahead and unhook them from the support wire to let everything droop out because if we unhook the sway bar and this drops, we do not wanna damage these lines. That's gonna be a bad day. So we'll unhook this ABS line with a clip removal tool. Just get in behind here and pop him out. Cool, and then see how much extra slack we have now. And then we'll buzz off that 13 right there. That should let us, it's a lot more room to work. There we go. There, we'll lose that, cool. So see, look at all that extra room we have now. Do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna support our rear axle. And then we're gonna pull our sway bar bracket off. This is a 15 millimeter socket. And now we can let this droop out. All right, and I'm gonna show you another trick to how to get one side to droop down versus the other side. So we'll take our jack stand. I'm gonna put it under this side, spin it back up. And as we raise the passenger side of the rear axle, that driver's side is gonna droop way down for us. And then we can get that coil in. We'll have plenty of room. All right, we got our new set of coils out. These are Ram 16Bs. These are the performance coils that are going in the back. I think they should have been called Rambo 16s, but that's okay. Uh, driver coil and passenger coil are the same size. So it's not designated. You can put either coil on either side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this upside down. We're gonna take the stock coil out of the isolator. We're gonna drop this. I always like to put the pigtail in a similar orientation. You can kind of see where it was seated just like that. The other thing I like to do is the lower spring seat on the axle gets full of dirt. So just wipe it out if you can. It'll just 
keep the powder coat nice on that open-ended last turn on the pigtail there. So if you have a buddy, you can have him hang on the axle and then we'll just get the coil right in. If you don't have a buddy to help you, you can use like, uh, like a ratchet strap to try to pull it down or you can unhook your pan hard bar. But we're gonna do it that way. We had Jordan here, he's willing to help. Thanks Jordan. All right, so we got our coils in, everything's lined up the way we want. We're gonna get a jack under the rear axle, bring it up a little bit. Now we can get the sway bar reattached. And I'll do That's finger tight. I'll get the top bolt on the other side. Take your time, you don't want to cross thread anything. That's why it's always good to at least get more than a few threads in. Awesome, that's hooked back up. Pull that guy out, pilot's in there. There we go. And that ABS line just plugs it right back. In there, we'll do the same on the passenger side. All right, it's time to install these humongous rear foam cell pro shocks. So what we're gonna do is start at the top. Also, don't forget, because these are neutrally buoyant, you can compress them down or extend them on your own. So that's kind of a nice little extra um, when you're not constantly fighting the thing, trying to compress it. So I'm gonna start with the top. I'm gonna take the top shock bolt, get the eyelet in. I'm gonna run that bolt through and then we can let it hang. We are ready to put the lower shock bolt in, but you can see already we've got a little bit of contaminants and rust corrosion building up. So grab some anti-seize. You can use the silver or the copper, but lower shock bolts, you want to use anti-seize on there. And don't be shy. All right, we'll take our foam cell pro, support our axle, get that lower shock bolt in, get that nut spun on. We'll hold off on tightening down these shock bolts because we don't want to pinch our bushings until the truck's on the ground. So we'll go get the shock installed on the other side and we are almost done. Okay, everything's installed. We're ready to basically come down and get our rear fender liners put back in. But just so I don't pick up a bunch of flack on the inner web tubes, you need to tighten the top shock bolt down now because once you get the fender liner in, you're not gonna be able to get to it. So normally we would wait till the truck was on the ground, but it's not that big of a deal. We're gonna tighten the lower shock bolt when it's on the ground. This one, it's just the way the truck was designed. So, all right, we're gonna get the fender liner back in. You wanna slide it into the back first and then keep pressure here. You won't scratch your truck and it'll pop right back in. All right, we'll get this lined up. We'll grab our 11 screws and our impact and we'll get them all zipped back in. Last one, if you want, you can hand tighten these just to double check your torque. We'll do the other side and get the truck back on the ground. All right, now that we've got the truck on the ground, or in my case, I'm cheating it a little bit, I put it on our alignment rack just to give me a little extra room to work. We're gonna tighten up all of our shock bolts and bushings. So grab a 22 and we'll get these locked down. Awesome, those are good and tight. We'll move to the front. And this front lower shock bolt, it's a 21 wrench on the bolt head on the back and a 24 millimeter socket on the front. And don't forget, we want to adjust our turnbuckles for our sway bar in links. The goal here is to get the sway bar sitting level. So we're a little high, so we'll grab a 22, move our jam nuts back, and then lower that down. You want to do a little on the front right and then a little on the front left. Work it down to where you want it. I'll jump over on the driver's side and do that. Another little heads up on these sway bar in links. You want to make sure that your sway bar is in its natural resting position so you don't, you're not you know, over torquing these sway bar bushings. And one way is when you're adjusting this, you'll feel it kind of relax and you can turn it with your hand, it gets pretty loose. So. Find that where this is you know, fairly loose and then you, you know you found where the sway bar needs to be. Also these jam nuts, uh, when you wanna tighten everything down, put a 22 wrench on the turnbuckle and then lock the jam nuts down. Hold it all in place and you wanna tighten, hold the turnbuckle and tighten the jam nut. 
top and bottom. And just for verification too, you can count threads on the top and the bottom and compare them with the other side. So I've got four threads showing here. I've got two down there. I've checked it with the other side. I know I'm set and good to go. So we can lock that all down. Sway bar's done. All right, now we just gotta tighten up our UCA bolts with the truck on the ground. I've got it on the alignment rack, so it's under its own weight. Grab an 18, I like to use a ratcheting wrench and start off by kind of giving it everything we've got. Once we get it nice and tight, I'm gonna lock up another wrench and then we can get a little more, a little more power behind this and get our Usain bolts tightened down. It's hard because you don't have a lot of room to work here, so we'll get the rear bolt tightened and just be advised that we've got our ABS line plugged in right there. So as long as we're careful, it should not be an issue for us. You gotta be hungry like the wolf. That's what the song says. The truck is all done and this foam cell pro kit looks great on the truck. We got it actually sitting a little higher than two and a half inches, which I like, but don't forget, the Foam Cell Pro front coilovers are fully adjustable. So if you want your truck to ride nice and flat, you can set it up a little bit higher. Or if you like that classic OEM style rake, cause you're gonna be loading gear in the back, you can set it up that way too. Look, if you want more details about this or to pick one up, go to ironman4x4america.com and we can take care of you over there. Mm -hmm.